I just wanted to show you this wonderful little nugget that the Holy Spirit showed me. You know, a lot of times when you try to talk to free gracers and show them verses like this one, Matthew 7, 21, where Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll jump completely out of the Gospel of Matthew and head over to the Gospel of John and try to say that, look, the only thing that's the will of God is that we believe in him and that's it. We don't have to obey, they'll say. And they'll go to John 6, 40, where Jesus says, for this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. And they'll say, look, this is what the will of the Father is, just that we look on the Son and believe in him. That's it. And they'll say, this is all that's required for salvation. You know, forgetting completely about the context of Matthew 7 and the Sermon on the Mount, the chapters that are before it, chapters 5, 6, and 7, that are leading up to this point, they completely just disregard the context of, of this verse. Jesus was going through the Sermon on the Mount, teaching us how to love our neighbor. Yes, how to do the will of God. He was explaining what the will of God is, and that's to do what Jesus says. That's to obey him and keep his commands and do his, uh, do his will. So they'd completely forget about the, the context of Matthew 7.21, but let alone the fact that Paul also tells us what the will of God is. And this isn't the main thing that I wanted to show you, but I did want to, want to touch on this. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 8, Paul says that this is also the will of God, okay? For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. So Paul says that this is the will of God, our sanctification. Now, a lot of times what they'll do with this one is they'll say, well, this has nothing to do with salvation. This is just about sanctification, as if this is somehow the optional will of God, that this isn't mandatory, okay? But let's just keep reading here. Paul goes on to say that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter because the Lord is an avenger in all these things. Listen to the wording that Paul uses here. It says that the Lord is an avenger in all these things. This certainly doesn't sound like this is just optional. Then he goes on and says, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. Listen to this. Why would Paul need to be solemnly warning people if this is all just optional? Friends, it's because they're deceiving you. This is not optional. That's why Paul is using the strong language, okay? But then he goes on. He says, For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. So just know that whenever you give somebody this passage and they just disregard it and they just say oh oh that that's just optional that has nothing to do with salvation then just know that they're not disregarding you they're disregarding god himself who gives the who gives his holy spirit to us they're disregarding god and god is an avenger in all these things it says that's why paul is solemnly warning them but this is what they'll do they'll say they'll say no no, no th this it says the will of God, but this isn't really the will of God as far as salvation. But what I, what I wanted to show you today was I wanted to show you a passage that cannot be refuted. And it's where Jesus says that the will of the Father is to hear his words and obey them. Yes, to actually keep his commands in order to be considered a family member. Now, a lot of these people, no matter how many verses you give them, they're, they're just going to twist them. They're just going to find a way around them. But this is one of the, this is one of the plainest uh, passages, I think, that speak on this. And Jesus specifically outlines what it means, as far as salvation, what it means to do the will of the Father. Okay, look at this. In Matthew 12, 46 through 50, it says, While he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brother stood outside asking to speak to him. But he replied to the man who told him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? 
And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So again, they, they would probably look at this and say, well, yeah, the will of the Father is just John 6, 40. That's it, that we just uh, look on the Son and believe in Him, and that's it. We don't have to obey. And, and they'll say it has nothing to do with obedience. And praise God for the synoptic Gospels. Okay, the synoptic Gospels are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And as we're going to see, the other Gospels give more detail into this passage. And in fact, Jesus goes on to define what the will of, of our Father in heaven is, okay? And, and he, he defines it as hearing the word of God and doing it. But let's, let's just look at the account in Mark first. It's something very similar. Uh, at the end here, it says, For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. And again, they would probably say, Well, yes, John 6, 40, the will of God is this, that we just look on the Son and believe in him, and that's it. Except... Until we get to Luke's account. In Luke 8, 19 through 21, Jesus goes on to explain what he means here. It says, But he answered them, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. Yes, his, his family members are those who actually obey him. Imagine that. Yes, so this is in the context of doing the will of my father. They'll, they'll, they like to say that, oh, this is just talking about John 6, 40, but Jesus actually says that he's talking about those who hear the word of God and do it. Look at that. Now, don't let this discourage you that these different accounts uh, ha have, have different wording in them. Okay, I, I think this is actually a blessing to see three different viewpoints on the same passage because we get these things that maybe Matthew didn't include, uh, Luke includes, or vice versa. So this is this is a really good thing, and they don't contradict at all. I, I think what's going on here, if, if we're to if we're to harmonize these passages, I think it's very plain that what Matthew, what what Jesus says in Matthew is, for whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother, and then he goes on to say that my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. For whatever reason, Mark and Matthew didn't include this verse, but praise God that Luke did. So, so we see here that hearing the word of God and doing it, this is the will of the Father. And yes, this is in regards to salvation. This is for salvation's sake because, again, this is to be considered his family member, his mother and brother and sister. So, this is to be considered his family. This is to be in the body of Christ. So this is absolutely talking about salvation. So next time somebody tries to say that, uh, well, the will, of, the will of God is only John 6, 40, that we believe in Jesus and that's it and, and that we don't have to obey, take them to this passage and show them the, the synoptic accounts of this passage and show them that Jesus defines doing the will of the Father as hearing the word of God and doing it. God bless.